Okay. Today we're going to cover <coughs> basically three things. And the first thing we need to talk about is dot product. When you have a vector 1 times vector 2, it equals x sub 1 times x sub 2 plus y sub 1 times y sub 2. So let's do an example here. Let's say we have vector u equals 3, negative 6. By the way, this notation that looks different is because this represents the vector at the origin. Vector v equals 4, comma 2. And we want to do the dot product. So, we will take, as it says here, vectors v use x sub 1 times vector v x sub 2. So we have 3 times 4. Then we will take negative 6 times 2 for y sub 1 times y sub 2. Negative 6 times 2. Now when you do this, you will see that we end up with a dot product of zero. Now something we need to do, which is in uh, the same uh, lesson today, is perpendicular vectors. When this happens with a dot product, then we know these two vectors, u and v, are perpendicular. And of course we know that means that they form a 90 degree angle. So this is true for all uh, pairs of vectors that have a dot product of zero. Now the next thing we need to look at, let's erase this. The next thing we need to look at is when vectors are parallel. Now in that situation, if you have a vector x comma y, sorry, let's do that again. If you have a vector x comma y at the origin, and you have a scalar multiple, which k represents, times the vector x, y, that scalar multiple is always parallel. So if you can multiply or divide one vector and get the other by, a, by the same number with the x and y, then that tells you that those two vectors are parallel. Now with that in mind, let's look at some examples. Suppose we have vector w equals negative 12, negative 6. Vector x equals 6, comma 3. And vector y, excuse me, equals 2, negative 4. Well, to find out who's perpendicular to who, we have to test the dot products. So let's test w with. do w with y. And when we do that, we take x times x, which would be negative 24, plus y times y, which would be positive 24, and yes, that equals 0. So we can say vector w is perpendicular to vector y. Now, let's look at the vectors and see, do we see any that are, have a scalar multiple? Do any of these, yes, I do see one. If you take x, vector x, actually I should redo this right here, uh, correct this here, it's out of habit. These are our vectors on the origin. 
So this should have these. Let's try x and w. Now, what do you notice about this? Well, as I look at x and w, one way you can check this to see is that, that your <coughs> x over y should be proportional or a ratio equal to the ratio of x over y in your other ordered pair. So we would have negative 6 over negative 12 for x, or for w, and for x we have 3 over 6. Now if these are equal, then that means they are proportional, which we can tell by cross multiplying, or you're just reducing. We see they both equal 1 half, or if you cross multiply, you see 36 equals 36. So since they have that relationship, and we know those vectors are parallel. So we use this symbol for parallel. X is parallel to W. Okay. That's one way to tell. You can also tell by just looking at them. You'll notice, uh, are there any others that are perpendicular? Yes. We have W perpendicular to Y, but if you check X and Y, you're also going to have a perpendicular situation there. We won't work that out since we've just done this example. Let's go to the next one. Now, something's very useful when you don't have angle measures, but you have ordered pairs that uh, rep ordered pairs at the beginning and the end of your vectors, and they share a common point for a vertex, then you can find the angle using this formula. Cosine of theta, which is the angle we're looking for, equals the dot product of your two vectors over the product of their magnitudes. So, now we know that the magnitude, if your vector is x comma y, and again, this is a habit, so I need to redo this. If you have a vector x comma y, then you find its magnitude by taking the square root of x squared plus y squared, which we found out and realized that that's actually using the Pythagorean theorem, because every time you have a vector, its horizontal and vertical components form a right triangle. And x is, hor excuse me, yeah, x is horizontal, y is vertical. So <coughs> that always forms a 90 which also forms a right triangle, which also means we can always find that hypotenuse, which represents the vector, the resultant, by taking the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay, let's do this with two vectors here. Let's say we have vector 1 comma 2 and vector negative 3 one. Well, let's find their dot product. So cosine of theta equals their dot product is going to be one times negative three plus two times one. And on the bottom we're going to find their two magnitudes. Let's do this right above them here where we have some room. That means we'd have 1 squared plus 2 squared here, which would be square root of 5. Here you're going to have the square root of negative 3 squared plus 1 squared, which is square root of 10. Now if we put that down here, we have the square root of 5 magnitude of vector u times the square root of 10 magnitude of vector v. And let's see what we get. Negative 1 over 
square root of 50. Now, because of uh, what we've learned in the past, anytime we're looking for an angle when we're doing trig functions, you remember that we'll need to do the inverse of cosine on your uh, calculator. So depending upon how your calculator works, on mine it's second cosine. And I can run this straight through, even as it looks right now, if I have, know how to use parentheses. But one of the reasons we learned to rationalize and simplify is because back in the day when they had calculators that couldn't use those parentheses, they had to do that so that they could plug it straight in through their calculator. So let's do that. <coughs> this is the same as 25 times 2, which is the same as 5 square root of 2. So we would have negative 1 over 5 square root of 2. Sorry about that. Equals, equals. <laughs> um, then, when you rationalize it, take square root of 2 times the top and bottom. We get negative square root of 2 over square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2 times 5 is 10. Now, I can run this straight through my calculator. And we'll put this right up here. We'll take the cosine inverse of negative square root of 2 over 10. And when you do that, at least in my calculator, I can run it through, put 2 in, hit the square root button, put a negative on it, divide by 10, and then hit second cosine. And in this case, if you do it correctly, the angle, or theta, in this case, will equal 98.1 degrees. And that's the formula you use, this formula right here. You can use that formula to find angles when you're given two vector ordered pairs represented at the origin. Now, this also is useful, as I said earlier, in finding a triangles. So we're going to go now and bring up a triangle that we can use. There we go. And we need to come back to this. Now, you'll notice in this situation we're given a triangle with these ordered pairs. Now, it's very important that you realize these are ordered pairs. So they're not vectors represented at the origin. So we must find, <coughs> first of all, the unit vector or the vector at the origin so that we can use the formula that we just talked about. So let's just start with finding angle R. If we have angle R is what we're looking for. First you go where R is, which is right here, and you draw your vectors that form that. R is going to be your vertex. So there is the vector that forms that side, and there is the vector that forms that side. Now that I know the two vectors that form that angle, I'm looking for this. Remember, we found the ordered pair for, uh, that represents the vector at the origin by subtracting in reverse. Vectors are directed, so we have to think about that. So we're going to take in reverse 4 minus a negative 2. So in that case, we would say that vector RQ equals the ordered pair the, from the origin that represents the vector. We would take 4 minus a negative 2, which is 6. And then we will take the Y minus the Y, subtracting backwards, 7 minus 4 is 3. So there's one of the vectors as it's represented at the origin. The other one is R, as we drew it here, RP. So vector RP, its ordered pair is going to be represented also by something we'll have to subtract backwards again. 
So to do that, we would take 2 minus a negative 2, which is 4, and subtract the y's. We take 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. Now, as you remember, in the recent, uh, just in the <coughs> past example we just did, this is all we need to find an angle between two vectors. So now we just apply that formula. So let's go back, <coughs> excuse me, to a page we can do this on and have plenty of room. But remember, we're finding angle R. That's what we want to find. So we're doing these two vector ordered pairs, 6, 3, and 4, negative 3. Now you notice, remember, we said these are labeled RQ and vector RP. And that's important. You'll notice the R is here because it's the vertex. Now, as I said in the formula, let's do the dot product. So to find the angle, we have cosine of theta equals 6 times 4 plus 3 times negative 3. Remember, it's x times x plus y times y. Then we do their magnitude, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So this would be 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. Be careful when you run this in your calculator here. A lot of people get a negative 9 because they don't know how to use parentheses in their calculator. And then they say, the calculator made a mistake. But calculators do not make mistakes. People make mistakes. OK. It's amazing when I have students say, my calculator gave me the wrong answer. Hmm. That's, a, that's an interesting statement. OK. Now we have. <laughs> here, 36 plus 9, which would be 45. So we're going to have the square root of 45. And then over here, we're going to have the square root of 16 plus 9, which is 25, which we also know the square root of that. So let's simplify a little bit here. We've got uh, 24 plus a negative 9. So in this case, we're going to have a 15. Let's write this down here. And then we're going to have, well, I think I'll simplify here. This is the same as, again, simplifying radicals. That's going to be 9 times 5, which is the same as, take the square root of 9, that's 3. 3 square root of 5. And then we also have this as 5. So now we have 15 over 15 square root of 5. Now that simplifies nicely because now we can cancel these. We got the cosine theta must equal 1 over the square root of 5. Well, then we need to take the cosine inverse of both sides to get theta. That's really what we're doing here. We'll take the cosine inverse of this. When we do that, then we know theta. Now, you run that through your calculator again. You can uh, do this before you take the cosine inverse. Make it uh, square root of 5 over 5, and then run it through. Take the second. Uh, cosine, second tab times cosine to get the cosine inverse. And in this case, if you do it correctly, we will find out that angle R is 63.4 degrees. Now, this procedure would be the same on every uh, angle of your triangle. Let's go back to that. So we can see something here. Now, here's what you should do. We're done with R. So really, what you should look at now is pick another angle. Let's do Q. And 
if we want to find angle Q, again, now we must start with it as our vertex and draw our hour two vectors that represent that angle as Q is the vertex, and that makes angle Q the one that we're going to solve for now. <coughs> now, I don't probably need to go through this whole process, give you an opportunity to practice it. I'm just going to help you set it up, but again, I want you to see that it's very important to understand that vectors have direction and that helps you understand which way to subtract when you draw these on your triangle. So again, let's just do the first step of this. We need to find the two ordered pairs that represent these two vectors at the origin. So the first one is QR. Let's try that. And that vector ordered pair is going to be negative 2 minus 4, which is negative 6. And then we'll have, we will have uh, 4 minus 7 for the y's, which is negative 3. Now we have that order pair representing qr at the origin. Let's try, now let's do the next vector, which would be qp. And again, you notice that q is first in both of these because it's the vertex of the angle we're talking about. All right, subtract backwards and here's what we get. One minus, let's make sure we do this right. Excuse me, two minus four is negative two. And then we have one minus seven, which is negative six. Now that you have these two ordered pairs, you can use your the formula that we just talked about that you uh, find the angle with. Again, the dot product over the product of their magnitudes. And when you do, you're going to get an interesting answer here. I'm going to write it down and see if you get the same thing. You're going to get this. If you do your uh, work correctly and simplify it, you'll get this, 1 over square root of 2, which is also square root of 2 over 2. And you should recognize that from as a special triangle. Not even, you shouldn't even have to run this through your calculator. If you know that the cosine of the angle equals this, then the cosine inverse of that would have to be from that 45-45 special triangle. So we know that that's going to be true. Now, it would be good for you to practice and and get that first on your own to make sure you understand how to use that formula. Now, because of our geometry, we don't have to use the formula to find the third angle. Right now we have Q as 45 degrees. We have angle R 63.4. And then we also have a third angle P, so we found these two, now we need to find P, but from geometry we know that we can add these two angles together, subtract from 180, and get the third angle. So you don't have to do this work if you don't want to, if you want to test it, see if it's going to give you the same thing, and then subtract uh, from 180, that might be a good way, just to make sure your answer is right. But we will find that when we add them and then subtract from 180, angle P, will be 71.6 degrees. Now, that's how you find angles of a triangle when you know their ordered pairs using vectors and trigonometry.